I've just had the opportunity to sit down with my friend Andy Katz. Andy, thank you for t taking some time now after thank the you. workshop. Thank you. Pleasure and, to see you again, my friend. And come out here. Uh, Andy just did a, a, a program and his photography. And I've known Andy for a lot of years. I've been very fortunate. Uh, and we bump into each other at different events and yeah. different times. Yeah. Uh, Andy does some remarkable photography, uh, number one, landscape work, but specifically focused in many cases uh, with uh, wineries, wine country, and different things like that. Yeah. So I asked Andy to sit down and talk a little bit about his history, how he got into it. Uh, like a lot of photographers and a lot of the stories we've been hearing, uh, you know, he was kind of a dead broke photographer at one time. And it seems that has to be sort of the process yeah. of getting where we're going. So. I'm going to kind of turn it over to Andy. We'll hear a little bit about things. We'll take a look at some of his photography. He's made some cool books. And uh, uh, if you get a chance, uh, check it out. His website will be listed below. And uh, also, by the way, uh, if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe. And if you hit that little ding dong bell, then you'll be notified when we have more cool videos up online. But Andy, tell me a little bit about this past. We were, you were in your program talking about how you were traveling through uh, Europe was it, uh, and uh, other places where you hardly had, you know, ten bucks, fifteen bucks a day. Well, that was actually when I was, God, I was like twenty years old. I got sponsored to photograph a project on children around the world, and I don't know exactly how much I was given to do it, but it wasn't a hell of a lot. I got one of those tickets that you went around that you the were world. A rail ticket or something like that. No, 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 it was no, a, flight, a flight, and you could go anywhere you want, but you couldn't go back. So you could go up and down. <laughs> so I didn't even know where the hell I was going to go. So I started traveling, and you know, I, I was. I think I was telling you that when I was in Indonesia, I was staying at a place for three dollars a night, and one was available for two dollars a night. And I said, oh, I'm moving. <laughs> so I moved my crap for a dollar a night. But it was, uh, you know, it was an amazing experience. And I was always, I traveled with my folks quite a bit. They were really wonderful travelers. And, uh, uh, but that one year by traveling by myself just got the bug in me from that point on that I was, I was obsessed. So the, the photography bit at that time. Well, the photography, I knew I was going to be a photographer when I was eight years old. My dad okay. brought home a book on Joseph Karsh, Portraits oh. of Greatness. Amazing, yes. amazing photographer. And I looked at it and I'm looking at this book and like a light bulb went off and I said, this, this is what I'm going to do. And from that point on, there was never any time in my life that I thought I was going to do anything but photography. And you've been very fortunate. Um, you know, everybody asks these days, can you still make a living at photography? How, how do you make a living at photography? And of course, a lot of what we've been hearing from some of the young photographers here at the Sony Condu event, um, it, you know, it's a different time. It's not as easy as it used to be. But now tell me a little bit about your career and how you've gone up to where you've been and so forth. Well, I've been really lucky. I've been really lucky. And you say that a lot yeah, in your presentation. I do, it's yeah. Luck is part of that ingredient. It's, yeah, but the harder you work, you work, the luckier you get. So I've always really worked hard on, on making this happen because this, this is the only thing I know how to do. If I didn't do this, I don't know what the hell I'd be doing. And it, you know, I've always had a passion for it. I loved it. Uh, from the beginning. So, you know, I started, uh, I, I went to, to Art Center in Los Angeles. I dropped out because it was getting expensive. And then I moved to Boulder, Colorado and found a place and met up with a bunch of uh, two other commercial photographers. And we were doing like head skis and Hanson boots, you know, Colorado -y type yep. of things. And then any high tech thing, you know, be a black box with a red light and, you know, make it look pretty and anything that came my way, portraits, uh, anything just to pay the bills, which you know barely happened. And then uh, at one point, um, I w even while doing the commercial work, anytime I had money, I'd, I'd find a cheap flight somewhere, go travel, shoot, come back. Uh, one time I was, uh, I think I was telling you that I, that I hadn't traveled in so long, I sold my car, my old Subaru, yeah. <laughs> left and came back, and I didn't have a friggin' car to ride. <laughs> so. Um, and then um, there was a singer named Dan Fogelberg, and at the time was a very popular singer, and he lived in Colorado, and he saw my work, and he said, you know, let's get together and let's shoot some pictures. We became very good friends. He died, unfortunately, um, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, I don't even. And um, so I did, like, I started getting into the music business, not by, just by luck. And so I did like seven of his album covers, and he turned me on to friends. I did other covers. So then I decided, well, I'm kind of in the music business. I moved to L.A., uh, opened up a studio, lived there for a year, and when I was, uh, and I had a blast. I was having a really good time. But then they said, okay, you got to sign your contract for the next year. And I went, 
wait a second, I'd much rather live in Boulder than Los Angeles. I went back to Boulder. Lived in Sonoma County, he Healdsburg, in wine country for 10 years because I was pretty involved in photographing wine. And then I left there, and then I moved to New York, which was seven years ago. And then from New York, I moved back, just moved back to San Francisco. Part of what you do is, is some books, and maybe you want to show yeah. us a couple of them. You had talked about the New Zealand, and Andy had a chance to uh, spend some time in it was South Island. You did North, North and South, North yeah, and South yeah, Island. Yeah. New North Zealand. Island's gorgeous. And uh, this is a, a beautiful book. And anybody that has never been to New Zealand, you should get this book. And anybody that's been to New Zealand should own it because there's another magical place. That whole uh, that whole country. I don't. Yeah. People say, well, you, well, tell me about New Zealand. I said, oh, you know, I don't even know if I can use words to describe yeah, 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 my yeah. experiences yeah. there. It's just a land of beauty, a yeah. land of magic. Yeah. You know, it's no wonder all the Hobbit movies were photographed yeah, yeah, there. Exactly. You know, there's a, a beautiful lakes. There's Milford Sound. I mean, just incredible mountains. Yeah. Wow, what a country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's stunning. I, I would rent a... Uh, the problem with New Zealand, as you know, is unless you're in Auckland, you, uh, at like 6.30, if you get to a restaurant at 7 o'clock, it's closing down. So I would rent like these campers, it, which was great because I had my wine in the campers because, you know, they're making great wine in New Zealand. Don't travel and, and, without and, the wine. And, and, <laughs> and necessity. Photography with fine wine, there's nothing like it. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so I would just go and I'd find a place to shoot at sunset and I'd know in the morning when the sun rises, I'd just get, go for a little hike and then get back in my old camper and go to the next. It was so much fun. I loved oh, every second of it. You know, the life of a landscape photographer, um, we live odd hours, don't we? Odd hours. So, yeah. you know, in your, in your talk you were saying, oh, you know, I get up, I, and of course, we, we don't sleep if we're landscape photographers, so if, yeah. you know, it's kind of a prerequisite, but you right. get up early, and you go to the spot, and by 9 o'clock or so, depending on the, the sunrise, yeah, you're, you're done, you're you have done. your coffee and breakfast, and, you know, then you can go shopping or hanging out. Do whatever you want during so, the day, yeah. And, and I know when I travel with my wife, she never really wants to get up for the sunrise. I, you know, I don't what know the why hell is that? So? She doesn't know. like to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> I, hate, I hate it so much that when the alarm goes off, the first thought that goes to my mind, this can't be for me. I know. This is for someone else. <laughs> uh, I was with Jeff Shuey once, and you know he always wanted to have his coffee, and I forgot to make the hot water, and he had the Vivia coffee packs. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah, he was right. so desperate. He, he <laughs> oh just started my pouring. god! <laughs> At least he didn't snort it. <laughs> oh, he did, but it was like, oh, you know, there's photographers. There's, you know, if I could invent a way to make a, a portable coffee oh, maker for landscape exactly, photographers, exactly, exactly, yeah. Maybe we could go on Kickstarter. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, and then we then we find that the other time of day where we find most of the good photography is in the evening. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, your, your, your books that you have just show such beautiful, you know, golden long light in yeah. so many cases and so forth. Yeah. So, so we were talking about before that, you know, being a landscape photographer, you know, it's nice to have skill, but you got to have luck with you too. I mean, you could wake up, be in the perfect spot, and the sky isn't doing anything, and you know you just have to come back, or you can get there first time, and the sky is magnificent. It's like bingo. Well, I have found places in in my travels where, uh, and Stockness, Iceland is is one of those. Yeah. There's a big mountain range, and there's this one spot you can go. And you know, every year, and I've been going there since pretty much 2004, yeah. sometimes several times a year. And I keep going back to that one spot, and one time, out of almost a dozen times, yeah, it was in the winter. 60 mile an hour winds blowing, colder than the yeah, yeah. witches, you know, it was just cold, windy. Yeah. But the clouds <laughs> were coming witch. over stockness and you know, I got out there, you know, found the right spot. Yeah. Couldn't even feel my fingers. Did a, a pano with the phase one, nine or ten images, stitches of yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. shot. Got back in the van and I couldn't get warm for like an hour. Oh. But the picture that's, that's is it. just yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. so it is number one luck and, and sometimes you just got to go back and yeah, back yeah, and yeah, back because exactly. you know it's got a potential right yeah, and yeah, yeah. and i know you've done that same and trick. perseverance perseverance yeah. yeah i mean if you were go like i'm cold i'm out of here which some photographers would do so t let's <laughs> talk a, a little bit about gear for a minute mm -hmm. uh, your history with your gear you're obviously now shooting with the sony mirrorless yeah, and we'll right. come to that in a mm -hmm. second but what did you start with and how did you get to the point where you decide mirrorless was the way to go? The, the first camera I had for Sirius was a Nikon F. I mean, I had an Argus twin lens. Like the reason. FTN with the, the plug-in or the Nikon F? I had the FTN. 
the FTM oh, with the yeah. plug in, oh, you know, course, the, yeah. the meter in yeah, the head. Exactly. And you're matching the red with the dot. Line. Oh, <laughs> oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. What a Great day. Camera. Those. Oh, yeah. Great God, camera. And you had Triax. Yeah. And you had the. We had Atomic film. X, we had yeah. film, you had to decide, am I in a colorful mood or a black and white mood? mood? Oh my High God. High ISO, low ISO. <laughs> yeah. Well, like push it in AccuFind and yeah. get there. <laughs> we used to have noise uh, like at 800 ISO. <laughs> oh, 800 is, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got noisy at 800 yeah, ISO on film. Yeah, it did, <laughs> it did, yeah. But we strive for that sometimes. That was part of the, the whole thing. So yeah. you move for, uh, and Nikon, which was just, everybody was shooting a lot of Nikon. Pretty much, Nikon yeah. It wasn't really even... Uh, a known brand almost in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So and then, then I had, you know, the Leica rangefinder is the, the bulletproof cameras that you'd have with you. And uh, then I, the first digital camera that I bought, I wasn't going to go digital until I found a camera that I thought shot better than film. And when Canon 1DS Mark II came out, I looked at the files and I went, this is better than film. So I bought the 1DS Mark II right before I did the New Zealand book. I mean, I just bought this camera and was on my way to New Zealand a couple of days later. And I found the transition to be, believe it, I thought it was very simple. Yeah. Because it's, it's still light, f-stop, shutters. It's the same stuff. It's just you're using a different media. And yeah, but there's after stuff you have to do now, too. You there know? is. And I, I don't do that much. No. I, don't, I don't even open Photoshop. I haven't opened Photoshop forever. I'm, oh, I'm a, JPEG? No, no, no. I'm shooting raw. Oh, thank God. But, yeah, I'm not that <laughs> stupid. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm doing everything in, in Lightroom or Phase 1. Oh. Yeah, and I, I don't, you know, I, I'm not altering very much. So now you, you, you went from the Canon and stayed there for a while. I said, that, well, then Sony uh, contacted me, and they said, would you be interested in representing our camera? And I said, well, can you send me a camera? So they sent me the, the 900 uh, with a 24-70 th uh, Zeiss 2.8 lens. And I, like you, I tested them, and I went, yeah, definitely. I'll take this camera. And that was, they couldn't sell any of them, but that was a really good camera. It was a, it was a, their, it was like the, the candle in the window kind of thing. You knew, you knew something was coming, and yeah, you know, they were onto something at right. that point. Right. Right. And then you know they were doing the SLRs, and they were, and then all of a sudden they came out with this mirrorless, which I think you appreciate like I do. Is I hate carrying heavy equipment. I mean, when I was shooting, the other thing I was shooting when I was shooting film was Mamiya stuff. The Mia 7, I did uh, Oh, wasn't that a beautiful camera? Gorgeous camera. Oh, I did, they, they use my images for ads for the Mia 7. And then, and then you know, the RZ67, yep. which weighed as much as a truck. I know, but it actually felt, looked like a tank, the way yeah. it was like a little pop-up. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> and, and you know what else I used? Was, this will bring you back. Remember the Pentax 6x7? Oh, the big one with the wooden handle? And yeah. the, oh, I had one of those. It was that, like a gigantic... 35 millimeters right. of hormones or and something. And that, that thing could start an avalanche. Remember that oh. mirror would come oh, down and man. would shake the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and it, was, it was such a beautiful camera. Yeah. Six yeah. by seven Six image. by seven. Phenomenal. So anyway, going back to the mirrors. Now I've got, you know, I'm using the A7R3. The images, I'll put those images against, up, I shouldn't say this, but I'll put those against four by five images. They're friggin' incredible. Yeah, that's the 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 Sony file is is really tremendous. Yeah, you know, and the I think what what gets me with that sensor, and I use the same same camera, is that what what I like now in in my landscape work mm -hmm. and any photography, even now you know the portrait work, like yeah. you're wearing a lot of dark. Yeah. Right now, and you know if you do a proper exposure and then you can use the post processing, and you can bring back the shadows. And let's just say we take a, you know, a big field of uh, you know, uh, grapes. And, yeah. Um, we, we then can just open up those shadows to bring in you know, the, the minutest detail. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, now you've got an image where you begin to explore it because you know, you've got a pro everything looks great, but yeah. you also have the subtleties. Right, And right. to me, sometimes photography has got to be about the subtle parts sure, sure. of the image. Sure, absolutely. And I really believe, you know, that having these cameras with this wide dynamic range, yeah. and many of them are doing it this day. I mean, yeah. You know, we, we happen to be working, 
you know, on the Sony side, a lot because of their sensors and their dynamic range built into the yeah. sensors and so forth. But, you know, that's when it changes. Yeah. When you find things in your image you didn't know you had. Right, like right, right, right. Just pulling a slider. Yeah. And then, you know, make the print or, you know, publish it or go to whatever media you want, you know, as long as it's out there, changes it, doesn't it? So, so the other thing about the, the, you know, the camera is, other than landscapes, but, you know, when you're shooting people, if you have that camera with a, like a 35 to a small lens, it's not intimidating. Where you have, you know, one of the SLRs with a 70 to 202, you, you've got like a cannon you're going up to people with. You know, this, this is a tiny little camera. It's pretty small when, yeah. you, when you leave it at that. And, and their new lenses, these G Master lenses, are just so sweet. Spectacular. Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, DxO, which is, I mean, you, you, go, you agree with their, I mean, it's pretty well, I use them. I mean, I, I agree with them, but to me, you can have That's all science. the tests you want. It's the use, you know, getting yeah, yeah, out yeah, and sure, using sure. it. And if yeah. it performs, you know, as you expect because of the test, then right. you're just astounded. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. just, those G Master lenses. They're incredible. And I'm in love with the 100 to 400. I'm going to do a little short Routine. take video on that. With yeah, yeah, yeah. That with the 1.4, that, that has taken my landscape photography where I can do the big landscape. Mm -hmm. And then I throw that lens on there and I start exploring the picture in the picture. Yeah. And... Oh, I'm into something new. It's it's pretty damn good. Yeah. So I'm having a lot of fun with it. I had I used that 100 to 400 for the A mount lens, and for Photo Plus, it was a picture of an Indian man walking. For Photo Plus, they printed the thing five stories high. I no mean, kidding. I, and so and 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 I didn't even know that they, <laughs> Sony surprised me. So the taxi driver dropped me up. I went. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, you, <laughs> <laughs> those are my photos. <laughs> and the taxi driver goes, oh, no, they're not. No, I swear, those are my photos. <laughs> but I've blown that up. The, the, the older version, which is not as good, that's a phenomenal lens. Yeah. Phenomenal. Well, they're all, they're all phenomenal. Yeah. And, I'm, you know, we sat with the uh, Sony executives yesterday, and um, I told a story about you know, sitting with the CEO of Sony a few years ago. Yeah. And, you know, they are on a mission. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, and well, you predicted it two years ago. You know, I wrote an article called "You Know, Family's yeah. a Betting Man." Yeah. So it's, um, I, I think, you know, they're not quite there yet, yeah. but they, you know, you can. They're ahead <laughs> of anybody else. They're working towards <laughs> it, and you know, when they put on an event like this, uh, where they bring you know, so many interesting and, and yeah. well-known photographers together. Yeah. Uh, not only where you can teach, but mm -hmm. you know you collaborate. We get a chance to sit down, drink wine, yeah. drink beer, you know, party a little bit. But it's a battery they, charger. There is so much sharing going on. Yeah, yeah. What a concept, yeah, you know? I love it. Yeah. So it's so cool to be part of this. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, it was great to meet you and say, hey, well, you want to sit down and do a video? Of course. <laughs> yeah. So you and I talk, and that's going to be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to shut each other up? <laughs> Blabber away. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, we could go on and on. Uh, I want to show off a couple more of your sure. books. And then what we'll do is we're, we're going to list uh, where uh, Andy's books are available down below and also in uh, the, the Luminous article. So yeah. if you'd like to, to purchase these books, you can. Yeah. Uh, but these are really good. This new one of yours, The Club of Nine. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about this. This is a great looking book. Thank you so Beautiful much. Beautiful photography Thank inside you. it. I mean, Thank just. You. Uh, incredible. So what, what was all this all about? Well, the Club of Nine, I've done a lot of books on wine, and the Club of Nine is in France, in Bordeaux, they have something called the First Growth. And these are, you know about these wines, these are wines that are $1,000 a bottle, $2,000 a bottle. So I decided that um, I wanted to get my books in the hands of millionaires and billionaires. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, you don't make yeah. money on books, to yep. be honest. It's a good PR thing, but you know, to sell prints. And that's kind of how I make most of my living is selling prints. So I, I did a book, I, I had to talk to all the wineries. Well, these people don't want publicity. They're, they're, they're doing just fine without it. You know, they're, they're, they kind of have a little air about them. So I brought my portfolio, I presented to all nine of my portfolio. They, they said, yeah, we're in. And, and I produced this book. But basically it's nine of the, it's nine of the most famous wineries in Bordeaux. Oh, it's the most gorgeous, famous winery gorgeous. in the world is Aperture and Devil Proof. You know that. Yeah, okay, yeah. just want to make sure. <laughs> well, I don't. Every time I sit with you, you remind me who they are. That's my label. And, and lastly, but not least, is mm -hmm. your book, uh, Sonoma, yeah. which is just a, another gorgeous book. Um, something. These are kind of coffee table books. Mm -hmm. I have one of your books on my coffee table. Oh, thank you, my friend. Um, Art Wolf and a few other thank books. Thank you. Oh, I just, I'm honored. Have, well, I just, 
I love wine uh, and uh, always have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a uh, fine connoisseur of it, but you know, this is it's just the geometry and some of the beautiful things you you know, photographed in this yeah, area is, is really great. What I'd love to do sometime, and sure. it's been great sitting with you for yeah, a few yeah. minutes, come and visit with you, go out yeah. and shoot. I love it. I want to go, and you, you make prints too, you're a good yeah, printmaker, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and printmaking is something I really believe in. Yeah. I, I'm finding photography is drifting away from the print, you know, right. we're in a swipe kind of society exactly. today, and exactly. to me, the, the print has always been the end result. Just looking at that, that's, that's and so, oh, the I tactile feel, holding a picture in your hand, being able to look at it. It's not backlit. So, anyway, I'd love to come out and visit with you sometime Anytime. and do that. You're Any, not that far away, and uh, yeah. we'll drink some wine and drink well, some coffee and get up early. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, and stay up late. <laughs> so, uh, you'll find all the information about Andy's website down below. Don't forget if you, <laughs> down below, you know, you, all the information is always under. below. Why does everybody <laughs> always say that? You know, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you haven't visited before, hit the bell button so we can notify you of more. Visit the Loomis Landscape where uh, not only do we have the videos, but there's some text and some more information about Andy and some of his photography. So Andy, I want to say thank Thanks, you very much. Thanks my friend, much. it was a pleasure. You. Always great to see you, my uh, friend. It is. And, <laughs> Thank you, well, thanks, everybody. Everyone. I'll see it. you on the Loomis Landscape. <laughs>